100 American infantrymen, their officers, medics, and Vietnamese scouts are dropped into a deserted clearing in the jungles of War Zone C along the border between South Vietnam and Cambodia, northwest of Saigon. The military mission is to make contact with North Vietnamese Army units, blast them with artillery and airstrikes to block enemy actions deeper inside Vietnam. The unit is Company C, 2nd Battalion of the 7th Cavalry, 1st Air Cavalry Division. The young men in Charlie Company, like those in every other line infantry unit, see their lives in Vietnam as an unpleasant interruption of what they were doing at home in the States. They have a special expression for their homeland. That, they say, is back in the world. For most of them, for those who are not shot up or blown away by bullets and mortars and rockets, Vietnam is 12 months of physical torture, endless hours of forced marching, sweating under the tropical Asian sun, grunting and groaning in the harness of a 90-pound pack, soaking in the rains of the monsoon, fighting off insects and crawling lizards, swallowing tasteless food crammed into cans, nursing the infected skin sores called jungle rot, collapsing every day with blistered feet and cramped muscles, and enduring the very private agony of memories of back in the world and each man's separation from his friends and folks. This, for one year, is their world. You see somebody walking? You saw somebody walking, you say? Okay, you just keep your eyes open. Did you know which way he was going? I'm on parallel to the trail. Say again? Parallel to the trail. Parallel to the trail? We're on that DT moment. Okay, just stay cool. The constant danger of contact and killing adds to the strain of surviving. The final physical task after each day's patrol is clearing a camp for the night. Uh, you're pretty much used to it, isn't it? After a while. Doesn't bother me too much. How about you? I don't understand. Hard work? Not really. This isn't too hard right here. It's been a lot harder when we're in bamboo sometimes. Pushing against the bush is another hazard in the 100 degree heat, particularly for point men, those who lead the way for Charlie Company. PFC Steve Puget passed out from the heat and exhaustion after pushing too long one day. Just can't walk through that kind of stuff all day. Just can't do it. What does it do to you? Well, I try to name something it doesn't do to you. It, uh, my partner Marsh walked it after I fluttered out there. Just can't uh, pack that stuff all day. Huge, the point man, is sent back for medical treatment. The pain of his earlier convulsion and delirium still showing. At 18, Puget's condition will improve enough in a few days for him to return to the field. Medical evacuations are rare in Charlie Company. So few are their casualties. How you doing, Papa Sarn? What do you know? It is a rare but welcome day when hot food is brought out to the men. The company usually gets its basic resupply only twice a week on what is called log day. Log days are less exhausting than the regular routine of humping through the bush. A birthday passes for PFC Carlton Dudley, his 20th. Just another day in the Nam, he says. Vietnam. He comes from Newberry, Florida, and his six months in the field have soured his love for the outdoors. Dudley, a member of 2nd Squad, 2nd Platoon, has developed a deep dislike for Army life. What's life like over here? <laughs> it's like pure hell. 
I mean, like a lot of the guys, they hunted back in the world before they ever come over here. They come over here and they stay out. And say we stay out 18, anywhere from 18 what? to a month. The bugs biting on us, crawling all over us. We have to sleep on the ground part of the time, sometimes on air mattresses, when we can get them. And, you know, you're humping all day long. And a lot of guys, they just change opinion about, you know, being out in the woods. A lot of guys say that if you go back to the world, they won't ever go back into the woods for anything, hunting or any other reason. The leader of Second Squad, and among the most respected soldiers in Charlie Company, is Sergeant Lyman Dunnick. Some of the others call him Gene. He is also known as Killer. Dunnick was drafted in Alexandria, Virginia, later than most men. He is 26 years old now, rising rapidly in rank to non-commissioned officer. Dunnick's determination to fight the war while trying to keep himself and the men in his squad alive is based on his belief that stopping the communists in Vietnam will protect his baby daughter and younger brother back in the world. You take your job uh, very seriously. Is that how you got the nickname? Well, you have to take it serious when you got your life and somebody else to worry about, you know? If you got an attitude where you just don't care, you might not go back, you know? So you have to do your job. I got five people I got to worry about beside myself. So I make sure all them get back, get myself back. I'll be satisfied. How'd you get the nickname? The killer? Uh -huh. Killed a couple of goose in a bomb cracker one time. <laughs> huh? Claymores. A little couple of claymores over them. Put a few 60 rounds into them. They was taking a... They was taking a bath. So, you know... <laughs> Just proves you don't take no bass while you're in the field. Harris, <laughs> Taylor. The closest link between Charlie Company and people back in the world is mail. Letters are the most important source of information about what's happening at home. PFC George Rivera's wife is writing worried letters, concerned that he makes it home safely to New York City. Rivera is the oldest man in Second Squad, 29 and has the least time left to serve in Vietnam. He was seriously wounded once, and now that he's getting short, Rivera is nervous about surviving the final weeks. When you get short like that, you kind of get start to worry about you, you worry when you're walking down the bush. You worry about getting hit. For me, I worry about getting hit again. I don't intend for that to happen again. But you can never tell. You feel that there's somebody after you specifically, just you, because you're short. They don't want nobody else, they just want to you. Spooky. Uh, really something. 